Today, we make history. And you're probably like, what are you talking about? That sounds pretty aggressive. But uh, I think that this has never been done before, or at least I haven't seen it. If it has, don't tell me about it because I want to think I'm the first one. But let's talk about my water cooling setup. As you can see, I have soft line tubing. And um, the good thing about soft line tubing, it's easy to deal with. If I need to drain the loop or undo anything, it's, it's nice and flexible. It does whatever you want. Downside. Doesn't look as good as uh, hardline tubing, a lot of people would say. I personally like the clean lines and bends of hardline tubing myself. Never done hardline tubing. I'm probably going to do it in the future to this thing. But wouldn't it be great if you could have the benefits of softline and the benefits of hardline? I think we can. So let me tell you what we're going to try to do. And you might be thinking, well, this video is live. There's no way he didn't do it. You're wrong. I could have completely messed this up and I still put the video out there because why not? What we are going to do today is using the art of 3D printing, we're going to try to make a casing or a shell or a backbone for my softline tubing to give it the appearance of hardline tubing. And then if you ever have to do anything with your uh, water cooling setup, you can simply undo one of the fittings, slide off the backbone, and then you can just do whatever you would normally do with a soft line setup. So that's the idea. I'm going to use this tape. This is uh, electrical tape to set the radius of my bends. Uh, I'm going to use this wire clothes hanger to basically map out my path so I can then measure, you know, all the angles and stuff and uh, the, the lengths. Because the problem with doing this is if we mess something up, we have to wait about three hours or so to find out when it's done printing, then find out it doesn't work. So hopefully this will give us a good idea of you know, how to design everything and hopefully we'll get the best possible chance of it working. So I think the best thing to do first is maybe this one, this uh, loop here. So I'm gonna essentially try to come up, over, back and down. If we can nail that one, then we can do the rest, I hope. Okay, we're gonna start actually simple. I noticed that this is actually, basically they're too close on their planes to do a back and then a down. So we're gonna do a simple U. Hopefully that'll just be a proof of concept that's gonna go from that one to that one. We've got it drawn up here just like we did before. We'll model it in there. I'm gonna be using just the standard EK, I believe this is 1013. Yeah, 13 millimeter OD and then 10 millimeter ID, which not really, not really necessary right now, but 13 millimeter OD. So we're gonna make the tubing or the, the, the shell about 13 and a half or 13 and 13.3. So it's tight. We want the radius to be somewhere around this diameter or this, the radius of this. So this is diameter is about 55. So we'll shoot for about 25 on the, on the radius. See how that works. See if it fits in there and if it, if we can get that one to work, then we can essentially get all these to work. It's going to take a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of trial and error. So let's get started. So that's our tube. Um, but essentially I want, I want it to be tight around the tube and I kind of want it to flare on the bottom to go around the fitting and the fitting is going to kind of help hold it in place. So what is the diameter of our fitting? About 20 it looks like. Yeah, 19.9. So 20 will work. So I'm going to cut it back the length of this fitting, which is about 15, blow it up to 20. All right, welcome back. So here is our first design. So 
Kind of looks like the tubes you see in Mario's world, but that is the idea. I have these cutouts here so you can see the tubing going through there. And then down here, they're running horizontally because I'm hoping that you can get your fingers in there to, to loosen up the fitting to help you get it off and on. But we'll see uh, how it works. It should be the right size to fit on my printer. So now we got to just save this file as STL, throw it into Cura, see if we can put it in there some way to print and see what happens when it comes off. So I don't know how, it shouldn't take too long, but for you guys it'd be like three seconds. So that, that it, it looks better than I thought. So now we got to see if we can get this, this hosing to fit in there, which I don't know, I'm pretty, uh, pretty suspect about those bends. They look a little too tight. I hope they work because they look sweet, but I guess we'll find out soon I get this box open. It looks close. It looks close. That'll be, I'll be amazed if we get it first shot. That'd be awesome. Yeah, the bends, bends are tight. Uh, Let's try some uh, white lithium grease. I don't know if this is safe for water cooling uh, tubing, so make sure you check with the comment section because they'll tell you if it is or not. But I want to see if I can get this in this form, really. I think those bends are too aggressive. They look very, very good. Problem is though, this tubing won't really go around. I think we can do one of a couple things. I think I got to open up the ID a little bit because it is a little tight still. And I got I to gotta make that a larger radius for sure by maybe not much, maybe five, five millimeters bigger radius and then open up the ID just a hair. And then those two things together might be able to get this tubing through. So now I got I to gotta reprint it. So. Be right back. It has been a day. I've been messing around with the design for this thing, trying out different, different ideas. And I think the one I landed on was this one. Essentially, I'm going to break the, well, this section, the pump to the GPU into two sections. I'm gonna split in the middle and I'm gonna do that for two reasons. One, it's hard to get the span 100% correct. Um, I can do it, I can print it over and over again, but eventually, you know, I'm gonna run out of material and it's kind of hard to order material right now. So I think the easiest way to do this is to break it. That way I can make a coupler like this that I can print to adjust the span. And the idea here is that I can get it perfect. And as I push it farther apart, it's also gonna push it down so I can put a preload on my tubing to keep it nice and straight. Cause the idea here is we're trying to mimic hardline tubing by getting those nice straight lines. And I think this will be the easiest way. Plus I made all these cutouts because it's easier to fish the tubing through there because it, it likes to hang up in the corners because um, it does. So that helps me get it through. Plus I think it looks better. You'll be able to see the tubing because we don't want this to be the centerpiece. We want the, you still want to be able to see the soft line tubing, but we want this to be kind of like a background item, not really the focal point. So that is what we're gonna to try to do. So now I need to drain the loop, which is kind of a bummer because if it doesn't fit, I gotta fill it back up, get back into the computer to redesign it. But I'm going to try to get this to fit. If it fits, then I'm gonna do this bend or this run. And then this run, I'm not gonna do the one from the GPU to the, the monoblock because it's literally like this long. What are you gonna do, make it straighter? And I'm not gonna do the drain line because I want that to always be kind of wherever it needs to be to be out of the way. So I'm gonna do that one and that one. This one will be tough because it's so long. I'm gonna to try to do the same thing, we'll break it in half, but we'll see how that goes.
Now, that, that looks, <laughs> it looks way better than I thought it was going to. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I first had this idea, I thought that's gonna be really hard to do because I really thought that hitting these, the start and end point of each run was gonna be really tough to model. And then if you didn't get it right, you have to redo it. And it takes about three hours per print or two hours or so. I thought I was just gonna spend hours upon hours, but like this run, first try. I mean, it's not perfect. Don't get me wrong, and I'm going to redo it, so if you're not subscribed to this channel, make sure you do. But the reason I'm not going to do it now is because I'm pretty much out of PLA, and because of a thing that we can't talk about on the channel, I won't get a delivery for probably a few more weeks or a week or two, depending on how Amazon's working out. But I did order some black stuff. I'm going to reprint pretty much that one. I want to make it shorter. This one, I want to refine it better. And I'm gonna cover that one and that one because I really like the industrial look. I thought about going to hardline tuning, but I really like this and I think it fits the channel very nicely. But if you're gonna do this, I mean, it's really not too bad. If you have a 3D design software and you got some, a 3D printer, all you need is a metal clothes hanger, a digital caliber, uh, and then you just, you just map it out. Leave yourself a gap. Normally I did it in the middle and then you can kind of stretch it and close it up. And then you just fill it with a spacer to give you a little bit of preload to keep it nice and straight and it looks good. It looks good to me. I'm, I'm happy to see, happy to hear what you guys think, but I like the industrial look. And when I get a new, some new filament and I get it reprinted, it's gonna look beautiful. But if you guys have any other ideas of crazy stuff you can do with a 3D printer or you want to see me do, even if it's like the dumbest thing you probably ever thought of, it's not too dumb for me. Leave me a comment down below. I'll give it a shot and make sure to come back and check out what this thing looks like once we get it tuned in real nice. Till next time.